which smartphone has the best battery life of 2022. Now that all smartphones have been released this year, let's finally settle this. Here we have 9 of the best high-end smartphones from the major manufacturers, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the iPhone 14 Plus, the Google Pixel 7 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, the Asus RG Phone 6, the Oppo Find X5 Pro, the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra and the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. And before we actually get to the battery life, I want to do a charging test. Now I know battery life is more important than charging speed, but it is a double-edged sword. Sure you want your phone to last as long as possible, but nothing is more infuriating than a slow charging phone when you really need it. 15 minutes in we already have some crazy differences and that is down to different charging wattages they support from 20 all the way up to a crazy 125 watts. Now the iPhone only officially supports 20 watts, but I've seen other tests show that it supports more. That's why I have one charging with the official 20 watts USB-C charger from Apple and another one using the MacBook charger, which has a lot more wattage. At 30 minutes, the Motorola is already fully charged, which is insane, while the Pixel doesn't even have a quarter charged. On the iPhone side of things, it does seem to support more wattage because the one charging with the MacBook charger has an 11% lead of the one using the 20 watt charger. At an hour, the Motorola, the Oppo and Xiaomi are fully charged, all with the highest wattage. The Asus isn't too far behind, but it has a much bigger battery to charge, which is why it's taking longer. Also, the iPhone starts to reduce the charging speed at around 80%. It does this to protect the battery life and increase its longevity. It's weird though, because all of these phones have some sort of setting to protect the battery health, but I turn it off on all of them to get the maximum charging speed, but the iPhones do it anyway. At an hour and a half, only the Sony, the Pixel and the iPhones remain, and the iPhones keep getting closer and closer to each other, so they're definitely throttling their wattage. The iPhones and Sony are now finally charged, and the 20 watt charger only took about five minutes longer than the MacBook one. So if you want to charge your iPhone quickly, you can use a higher wattage charger, but only up to 80%. After that, it doesn't really matter. I have no idea what's going on with the Pixel though. I'll fast forward the rest because it took a while. It took two hours and 19 minutes to fully charge, which is incredibly slow. You can charge the Motorola almost five times in the same time period. All right, now that they're finally fully charged, let's unplug them and jump right in with the battery test. As always, all of them are calibrated to the exact same brightness. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and location is enabled and there's no SIM card in any of them to keep it all fair. I'm very excited for this battery test because there's no clear favorite. I have no idea who will win. Last year, the iPhone 13 Pro Max completely dominated, but this year, the Android competitors are quite strong and they've made some big battery improvements. I'm hoping it'll be enough to finally dethrone the iPhone. Now, if you just look at the battery capacities, the iPhones should actually have the worst battery life because they have the lowest capacities. The others are usually in the high 4000s or at 5000 mAh hours with the ASUS having a crazy 6,000 milliamp hour one. It actually doesn't look like a huge phone. All of them are big phones, but it doesn't really stand out. But if you do pick it up, you notice how thick the device is. It's one of the biggest phones I've ever held. I'm very curious to see if that translates into record-breaking battery life. An hour into the test, it doesn't look like it, with the iPhone 14 Pro Max in the lead, and the Asus is far from leading. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button to show your support. Now, the display is the biggest battery-consuming part of a smartphone, and we have some major differences here. Not in terms of size, all of them are between 6.7 and 6.9 inches. Except for the Sony, it's only 6.5 inches. It's still as tall as the other phones because it has a different aspect ratio. It's more narrow, which actually makes it quite comfortable to hold. While it has the smallest display, it actually has the highest resolution. It has an insane 4K panel. And I know what you're thinking, that's gonna drain the battery a ton. And Sony thinks this too. That's why it only really uses the full resolution when you're in an app or consuming content then can take advantage of it. Otherwise, it lowers the resolution to reduce battery drain. The others are either Quad HD or 1080p, with the iPhones being exactly in between that. Now, some of them allow you to adjust the resolution, but not all of them, which is why I didn't do that. I set these phones to the exact same settings I would personally use them with. Now, sure, you can reduce the resolution and the refresh rate and enable battery saving options, but that's not really the point of this test. And if you're buying such a high-end phone with all these amazing features, why would you cripple it 
by decreasing screen resolution, for example. By the way, here you can nicely see how the new Dynamic Island on the 14 Pro Max looks so much more modern than Notch on the 14 Plus, but it still pales in comparison to the Android competitors, which looks so much better. Let me quickly tell you about this video's sponsor. You Green probably make the best fast chargers out there. I want to show you two of my favorite products. The first one is the Nexo 65W fast charger and it is the best travel charger. It can charge up to three devices at a time, and that means with just three of these, you can charge all of these phones on this table. The best thing about it though is its size. It's only slightly bigger than Apple's USB-C charging brick and about 50% smaller than the MacBook charger. This is the Nexo 65W desktop charger, and it is not meant to travel. It sits on your desk and lets you charge all of your devices at a time with ease. It has four charging ports, two USB-C and two regular USB-A. Both of these chargers support 65 watts, so you can charge all of your devices at maximum speed, and they can even charge a full MacBook. Ugreen has some huge Black Friday discounts. The desktop charger is 25% off, and the best travel charger is 36% reduced. Just for Black Friday though, so be fast. Make sure to click the links down below to get yours, and let's continue with the battery test. At three hours, the iPhone and the Asus are now in the lead, with the Sony falling behind. It seems like despite the precautions Sony took, the 4K panel is draining the battery a ton. But that's not the full picture. Another reason why it's doing so poorly is actually the refresh rate. You see, all of them, except for the iPhone 14 Plus, have a high refresh rate. Usually 120 Hz, the Motorola and the Asus can go up to 144 or a crazy 165 Hz even. But I'll be honest, those extra Hz are not really noticeable. The big difference is in terms of display technology. You see, you don't need a high refresh rate all the time. Sure, it's nice when you're scrolling, have a smooth display, but when you're watching a video, it can drop down to, for example, 30 Hz to conserve battery life, because a high refresh rate obviously drains the battery more than a lower refresh rate. Now, you may have noticed that the screens are flickering at times, that is exactly that, the refresh rate changing. But here's where it gets complicated. Not all phones can switch the refresh rate the same way. The Sony doesn't switch the refresh rate at all. You can either set it to 120Hz or 60Hz. There are some apps where it reduces the refresh rate and if the device gets too hot, it does the same. But apart from that, it's fixed at 120Hz and that drains the battery a lot. The Asus and the Motorola do this better. The software adjusts the refresh rate according to what app you're using. So if you're using an app that doesn't require a higher refresh rate, it will reduce it, but it can only switch between fixed refresh rates. The others all have a new LTPO tech, which allows the displays to variably adjust the refresh rate between 10 and 120 Hz and anything in between. That of course is much more efficient. The Samsung, Xiaomi and Oppo can even go all the way down to 1 Hz when viewing static content. The iPhone can do this as well, but it's reserved for only the new always on display. To keep it all fair, I did turn it off though. In our previous test, it did add a lot of extra battery drain. Nevertheless, we're now going to do a standby test because we don't use our phone non-stop throughout the day. They were in standby for 9 hours. Most of them lost 3 or 4%, which is pretty good. 5% lost on the Samsung and 6% on the Sony. But the Asus only lost 1%, which is insane. I don't think I've ever seen a phone do this well in a standby test. Five hours in, we're now gonna test the chipsets. I know you don't run benchmarks on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is a good representation of some high intensive usage, like some high-end gaming. And generally, it's a good demonstration of their raw performances. Most of them use the same Snapdragon chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or 8 Plus Gen 1, which is a little newer. But as Apple has shown, custom chips can have some great benefits. That's why more and more manufacturers are moving towards them. Samsung has their own Exynos chip, which did perform pretty well, especially in the graphics department, but is lacking a little bit in raw processing power. Google's Tensor G2 chip is a big improvement over their first generation chip, but unfortunately it still can't quite keep up. Apple has always developed their own chips and the new A16 Bionic crushes the competition. Even last year's chip, the A15, which is still in the 14 Plus, beats its Android competitors. Only in Antutu, the iPhones are beaten. All right, the Sony's dead. We're now recording some 4K video, one of the most intense things you can do on your smartphone. By now, all of them, except for the Sony, have reached decent battery life territory, which is why we're now gonna speed things up and then let's get to the results. In last place is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. At six hours and 37 minutes, it's not a good result. I wouldn't recommend this phone. The battery life is bad, it's really expensive, and charging speed wasn't particularly fast either. 
If you do get the phone for some reason, you will have to disable the 4K mode and the 120 Hz to get decent battery life, which is pretty unfortunate. Next up is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, 7 hours and 59 minutes. It's a much better result than the Sony's, but I still expect it a little better from Samsung. Sure, battery life is decent, but it could be so much better. And Samsung's flagship as a leading Android manufacturer should do a little better. In seventh place was the Oppo Find X5 Pro. It lasted eight hours and two minutes. And in sixth place, with the exact same result, the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which lasted just a couple of seconds longer. Both decent results. The Oppo does have much faster charging, but to be fair, it is also a more expensive device. In fifth place, with a pretty good margin, was the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. At 8 hours and 55 minutes, we're approaching very good battery life. It also has crazy fast charging, and it being Motorola's first flagship in a while, I must say, good job, Motorola. In fourth place, we have the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. It lasted 9 hours and 12 minutes, and it is just an amazing all rounder. Great battery life and very fast charging. Unfortunately, it's a China exclusive, but there are some websites which sell it internationally. There's one link below. Now we have a huge jump of two and a half hours. That means the top three all have incredible battery life. And in third place, at 11 hours and 49 minutes, we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Don't really have much to add to that because charging speed could be a little faster, but with such stellar battery life, you won't have to charge your phone all too often. Unfortunately, it is really expensive though. In second place, at 12 hours and two minutes, we have the Asus ROG Phone 6. Insane battery life, and if someone could beat the 14 Pro Max, it was going to be this one. With its massive battery capacity, paired with the slightly lower resolution on 1080p screen, the battery life is just outstanding and the best the Android market has to offer. And charging speed is also not too bad. In first place, however, we have the iPhone 14 Plus. At 12 hours and 22 minutes, it didn't win by much. And to be fair, it was only running at 60 Hz, but it's still an amazing result nonetheless. And if you want the best battery life on a smartphone, this is the one. I'm curious to see if it can be dethroned next year. Subscribe to not miss my upcoming battery tests. Watch this video next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.